Since nearly the beginning of Hollywood and the motion picture industry's earliest days, westerns have always been one of the leading genres in all of filmmaking. The western genre had always maintained a grip on the public's preferences towards mainstream entertainment, starting with the cross-country success of Buffalo Bill's Wild West show and other legendary vaudeville performers. With the introduction of motion pictures, the western genre was revolutionized depicting the American frontier with a new lens that only made the American public's fascination with the Old West that much stronger. Starting with 1899's Kidnapping by Indians and 1903's The Great Train Robbery, folks have flocked to the silver screen to see their favorite actors and actresses reenact their favorite moments in history. In the years since, Westerns have launched countless careers for performers and directors alike, winning countless awards, and inspiring the imaginations of many who have used the backdrop of the Wild West to tell contemporary stories and challenge the perspectives of which we view our country's past. To gain a better perspective on where these stories originated and how they've been adapted into major motion pictures, we wanted to dive deeper into the mythology of films set on the American frontier and trace their roots back to the people who actually lived it. Thus, here is a Hollywood Western based on true stories and real events from the Old West. As a fair warning, spoilers for these films will be presented. Discretion is advised. One of the most iconic Westerns of all time came along in 1956, directed by legendary filmmaker John Ford and starring the most iconic Western actor of all time, John Wayne. The story follows a former Confederate soldier by the name of Ethan Edwards as he returns to West Texas after an eight-year hiatus from the territory. In West Texas, Ethan stops at the home of his brother and sister-in-law, Aaron and Martha Edwards. There, he meets his nephew and nieces, Ben, Lucy, and Debbie, the latter of which he gives his medal he was awarded during his time in the Mexican Revolutionary War. It doesn't take long after Ethan returns to West Texas that cattle are stolen from the Edwards family's neighbor, Lars Jorgensen. Ethan, Aaron, Lars, and a ragtag team of Texas Rangers pursue the cattle rustlers and find the lost cows just a few miles away. Of course, it doesn't take long to realize that the theft was a ruse by a gang of Comanche warriors attempting to distract the men from their ranches and more importantly, their families. Back at the Edwards' home, Ethan finds his sister-in-law dead, along with Ben, and his two nieces abducted. Hungry for revenge, Ethan and company waste no time taking off into the West Texas wilderness in search of the Comanche camp that kidnapped his nieces, led by a central warrior figure named Scar. During the first leg of their trip, Ethan stumbles upon the remains of Lucy, who had been brutally assaulted and killed left behind in an empty canyon just a few hundred meters from the Comanche camp. At the time, Ethan is without enough manpower or a strategy to make a move, and after the onset of winter, is forced to return home without his only living niece, Debbie. Over the course of five years, Ethan searches high and low for Debbie, but to little avail. He is joined by Debbie's adopted brother, Martin Polly, and the two traverse all the way into New Mexico before a man gives them intel of Scar and his warrior band's location. While the first raid doesn't save Debbie's life, Ethan and Martin are able to survive another attack before returning home one final time. It's on their last mission into the desert that another tip reveals Scar's campsite. Ethan makes one final push and successfully retrieves his long lost niece from the capture of the Comanche. Scar is defeated and Ethan brings Debbie home to what little family is left, despite wishing she had died rather than stay imprisoned by the Comanche. In the end, Ethan walks away from his years-long journey of vengeance with an understanding that his purpose was fulfilled, and all that's left is to trek through the still untamed world of Wild West Texas. The searchers didn't go on to sweep the Academy Awards or make nine figures at the box office, but with its breathtaking images of the American frontier and poignant storytelling critical of race relations in the Wild West, it's become one of the most important Westerns ever made in American cinema, as well as a massive favorite amongst moviegoers young and old. 
While The Searchers isn't a documentary or biographical film by any means, it is based on a 1954 novel of the same name written by Alan LeMay. For years, critics of both the book and the movie believed LeMay had based the original story on the real-world kidnapping of Cynthia Ann Parker. In 1836, a nine-year-old girl was abducted from her Fort Parker, Texas home by a band of Comanche warriors. Despite long and arduous attempts to rescue her by both family members and Texas Rangers alike, she remained in captivity for 24 years. During her time, Cynthia married one of the Comanche war chiefs and with him gave birth to three children. One of these children, Quanah Parker, would later go on to become one of the most famous Comanche chiefs in history. When Cynthia was eventually recovered by the Texas Rangers, she was actually taken against her will as she had grown accustomed to living with a Comanche and didn't want to leave. One of the many reasons she was forced back to her original family was due to the exhaustive efforts of her uncle, James W. Parker, in his own personal search for his niece. James Parker was at one point an incredibly rich and influential person and used both his fortune and his resources to look for Cynthia across the 24 years she was missing. James Parker was seen as an influential figure on the creation of Ethan Edwards' character in the book and the movie. So was the conflict that led to Cynthia's rescue, called the Battle of Peace River. On December 18, 1860, Texas Ranger Captain Lawrence Sol Ross descended upon the medicine mounds of modern-day Quanah, Texas, and raided the Comanche village, killing plenty of women and children in the process. The Battle of Peace River mirrors the film's adaptation's depiction of Ethan Edwards rescuing his niece, Debbie, and his own Texas Ranger-led raid on Scar's encampment in the 1956 film. Other major conflicts that saw Texas Rangers take Comanche tribesmen as prisoners were the 1868 Battle of Washita River and the Battle of the North Fork of the Red River in 1872. These are thought to have inspired similar events in the movie as well. Despite the similarities between the case of Cynthia Ann Parker and the story of the searchers, it was later discovered to be one of just 64 various child kidnappings that occurred in 19th century Texas, as researched by Alan LeMay. That being said, however, there is another historical event that Alan LeMay's research notes reveal was instrumental in crafting the specific story of the searchers. This would be the story of Britton Johnson. Britton Johnson, called Brit for short, was a former slave turned teamster. Born in 1840 as a slave to Moses Johnson of Tennessee, Britt eventually became a foreman on Moses Johnson's ranch in the Peters Colony and made a life for himself post-enslavement. In October of 1864, Johnson was living in Young County, Texas, with his wife and children, working as both a teamster and a scout for the Texas Rangers. Simultaneously, a 1,000-member war party of combined Comanche and Kiowa warriors descended upon the Brazos River country, led by their chief, Little Buffalo. They swept through the area and destroyed at least 11 farms, stealing both cattle and women and children from the homesteaders. Amongst those kidnapped were Britt's wife and children, and in total were a part of a group of 10 prisoners held captive by the Comanche. Britt Johnson immediately swore his revenge and led a rescue mission into the Texas wilderness to find his lost family. He searched throughout the Texan deserts into the summer of 1865, when he learned of his family's location at a reservation in modern-day Verdon, Oklahoma. With the help of a friendly Comanche chief by the name of Milky Way, Britt was able to track down the warriors and organize a ransom deal to recover his wife and kids. Luckily, the band of Comanche and Kiowa were receptive to the deal, and Britt was able to successfully trade back the lives of two others in captivity. He returned them home and immediately became a legendary frontier figure. Britt's heroics didn't end there, however. After saving his own family from the Elm Creek Raid of 1864, Britt again dedicated his work in finding another one of the kidnapped children, a little girl by the name of Millie Durgan. Spanning the course of three separate tours throughout Texas, Kansas, and Native American territories, Britt's mission never bore any fruit, and after a few years of sacrificing time and money in his quest to locate Millie, he was told the young girl was dead 
and it was time to move on. Britt was reluctant to abandon his search and rescue missions and never quite gave up hope that one day, Millie Durgan would be brought home to safety. Eventually, Britt and his family moved to Parker County, Texas. Britt had started a freight business transporting goods between Fort Griffin and Weatherford, Texas, and balanced the new gig with his family duties and continued scouting missions with the Texas Rangers. On January 24, 1871, Britt Johnson was leading a wagon train back through Young County when a band of 25 Kiowa warriors surprised the caravan with a wagon raid. Britt wasn't going to go down without a fight and used the dead body of his horse as cover while he took on the raiders by his lonesome, seeing it as one final stand against his family's former kidnappers. In the end, Britt was killed by the warriors on that fateful day. Another crew of Teamsters that heard the raid nearby arrived at the scene and found no less than 173 shell casings surrounding the body of Britt Johnson, a symbol of his relentless pursuit of survival and the endless courage in the face of adversity. Alongside the rest of his men, Britt's body was buried next to the wagon trail, forever remembered by both the Texas Rangers and Teamsters alike. It often comes as a surprise to those who learn of Britt Johnson for the first time that his story hasn't been adapted into a major motion picture in Hollywood before, but the essence of it has. The truth of the matter is that child abductions were not a rarity in the Old West, and Britt Johnson was one of hundreds of men who were faced with the expectations of vengeance and victory, much like Ethan Edwards and the legacy of the searchers that came before him. <laughs>